Um, yeah, game number two. Here we go. Who do we have introduce this Baron? Certainly, here in the red we have Royal Pleco uh, playing as the English for a change. Um, you know, taking a moment away from his Royal Knight shenanigans from the previous game. On with him, his teammate only cams, continuing to play on the Ottomans. Um, on the other side of the map, we have Alukar in the yellow, um, playing as the Malians and Vortex Reload in the Cyan or the Teal, um, playing as the English. Of course, uh, Malians, one of the options that they do kind of have are the Warrior Scouts uh, openings, but let's talk about the map a little bit here. How do you feel about this? Generally considered, well, really hard map to like it's it's a very big map, so it takes a lot of investment to wall. Um, but people do tend to wall this map a lot more, just because I guess psychologically it's easier to draw, you know, a straight line across it. Anyway, uh, we're gonna see how these players are going to tackle the early game. What is I see that you have I, some opinions on those cliffs, cow. Yeah, I I I don't know what happened here. Uh, sometimes as well, though, interestingly, sometimes this happens. It actually mm -hmm. did happen. There's a very small one here. Um, that can happen sometimes in the middle. Anyways, it's not important. We are on the pit. One of uh, one of the maps that exists here in the map pool that we have in Rising Empires League. It's not a personal favorite of mine, so to say. But really, um, <laughs> but it is a good map. It's a fun map. We do have Malians here and the Ottomans to uh, two sieves that to a certain extent actually like this. They are very happy with this. We do again, though, have an English mirror. Well, so, uh, we'll, I have mean, to, we'll have to see. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Uh, that It was the 2 2 2 opening, I believe, for Vortex Reload, where you sent two villages toward two to Gold and uh, two, to uh, two to Build a Mill and then on to Food. Uh, generally, the, the idea behind this is to get a really early wheelbarrow, which you can see that Vortex is doing. And to be able to speed up, you know, have an economic boost going into feudal. Um, you can go fast castle with this build, but you can also play for a longish feudal. Uh, yeah, there, no. are, there are some options here. On the other hand, for standard starts out of Royal Pico. And uh, the monster party from Alucard. Uh, and okay. in fact, Vortex is going to deliver up some sheep, which kind of feels to me, well, we've talked about the Warrior Scout opening for the Malians and how strong it is just because of the ridiculous amount of health regeneration that comes out of those scouts. You can, uh, and the fact that they really only cost food, which is a resource that, you know, the Malians can modulate very effectively with the cows. Uh, sorry about that, cow. <laughs> the cattle, they're named cattle, goddammit. And... <laughs> with the, with the uh, unnamed bovine creatures that Humanity has not yet found an appropriate um, identifier for. Regardless, we'll see how Royal Pleco and Only Camps are able to deal with that opening if it does come through. A standard council hall start for Royal Pleco, so no Abbey of Memes going to be on the board for us. Um, and for Only Camps, yeah, standard. You know, you take three from gold, you take one villager from food. This is for I, I, Um but yeah, as you were saying, right, the, the issue with the 2 2 opening, and in my opinion, why it slightly fell out of favor, we do see on the stable, so definitely going to be Warrior Scouts, is that the 2 2 opening is uh, very slow uh, to actually get you going. Uh, yes, you have a very strong eco quite early on, but it's still very slow to get you going. And uh, it leaves a lot of room for punishment. It might even be better, it, it probably is better in 2v2 considering the map is longer. And bigger oh, but we'll have to that's see. definitely sorry go ahead so yeah interestingly enough though the ottomans they did not go with that military school opening something that often doesn't actually happen considering the fact that it is such a long map and it takes so long to actually walk all the way over uh alucar here has been idling his town center a little bit uh, definitely something but here we can see already the strength of the warrior scout. They're faster, they do more damage, they regenerate m more than the normal scout. So if you ever get into this situation, say goodbye to your scout. 
Yeah, the sort of map control that they give you is really ridiculous, especially over vision, because normal scouts, of course, cannot catch up and murder uh, scouting units. You need horsemen to be able to do that. Um, of course, here, for the price of one small upgrade, you get a unit that does an incredible amount of damage to a scout, because remember, scouts do get 10 bonus damage against other scout-type units. Um, do they? Yeah, it's... They do, yes. Oh, yeah. 10 versus scout. Interesting. Yes. I never actually um, thought about that. I just, like... It makes sense. Uh, anyways, we do see, though, the production building uh, of the Ottomans for only camps here, slowly starting to ramp up to uh, black uh, military schools. It's going to be forced off of it, 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 it for the time being, though. It's going to actually choose to take the fight with the villagers. 17 here. Just trying their best to uh, use those shivs, get them out. It's actually going to get us around on the scout here as well, though, interestingly enough. It's going to be slowly taking it out, take some time to actually get them. Due to both the fact that they have more HP, or they don't have more HP, but they have that regeneration, which is effectively more HP. Can take the fights. And basically how I like to think about warrior scouts, they are just horsemen that regenerate faster. They're not scouts anymore. Well, of course, uh, they don't get the bonus against uh, archers or any infantry. Oh. Up until later in the game, oh, I see oh, oh, oh. Um, that professional scouts has been added to this mess. Look how quick they are. Wait, how much movement speed does he have now? 1.22 versus Sipahi that has 1.88. So, you're honestly, like, you're fine just running away with the deer cockroaches, deer cockroaches even though you're getting attacked on. This is so rough. And it's, but, uh, it's a pit, also... right? So, there's no feasible way of actually defending this. Also, like, you know, if you want to send a horseman after it, the scout with the deer on his back just turns around and stabs you, and you're like, hey, man, that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> then, anyway, um... Then it regenerates, so it doesn't care. <laughs> He's, like, taking a snack from the deer on the way back, and we'll have to see. Yeah, he's actually bringing it all the way back home. Has chosen to go with them, some cattle with it as well, so... We'll actually have to see. It could potentially look to get, take out more deer patches here. Of course, you're is... against the English and you are against the Ottomans, so they don't particularly care. The Ottomans have that twin miner at Modessa, which is effectively infinite but very slow food, and then you also have the English, which, well, farms. Um, ooh. But I haven't really talked about it. Pleco are actually going for two town centers behind this, so. We'll definitely be needing a little bit more uh, food than uh, expected. Imams here as well, coming in from only camps. Yeah, I was... Uh, it is a little bit of a strange feedback loop because the scouts help you secure more food, uh, which help you secure, make more scouts and so on and so forth. I... I oof, this is a bit of a strange fight. Yeah, I feel like you have to take this fight though. They didn't know, but we knew that there was potentially a uh, a, uh, a tower coming up for uh, Vortex. Could have been potentially very rough though, but we'll look at the Warrior Scouts. They're just doing fine against the Longbows here. And as well, we have the mass from only camps with the Ottomans. Especially doing quite fine. Is able to push back the real team for the time being. It's going to be trying again to make uh, that uh, make the tower. I actually don't think this... This is barely out of vision. He's just barely out of the back of the stealth force here. So they actually won't know when it, until it's too late that that tower is going up. No doubt an intentional decision to try and block lines of sight. Uh, especially from the long women, which have long range. Regardless, uh, behind this, there, Aluka is setting up trade. Oh no. Oh no. No trade trick, though. No, just straight clean trade. No, Alucard, a person of honor, I would say. <laughs> so, um, sometimes this does happen on the, the pit, though, uh, with the pit mines. If you're very unlucky, you're actually not able to put enough houses. You're not able to actually put houses around your pit mine. Surely, in this case, it's fine. I mean, not when he blocks it with the market. That doesn't work. 
Oh, the tower actually mm, is... Oh, oh no, it's so close to being finished as well. And this is like, I don't want to cancel it because I know it's so far, it's so close. But you can't get this one. You just cancel this one. I mean, the army numbers here are really good, of course, for the Autumn player, naturally. Um, and it does lead to some reluctance on the side of Luca and Vortex to be able to engage upon them. The... Yeah, but I guess they're alright with it. Like, I imagine that they're thinking, alright, well, we have trade, which is going to be going soon. And as long as we're not being attacked, and we can wall up and, you know, force the fight into a sort of closed area. We don't have to worry about constant raids on our trade. Yeah, it's, it's the important. The third outpost. Third time's the charm, really, for yeah. Vortex. Well, we would imagine so. And we can see your idea of talking about being uh, scared of raids and just... Yeah, Vortex is scared of raids. Um, this is literally yeah. just like know you but he has to be careful though one more chop here and it actually opens up so you need to be very careful when you do something like this that you actually just don't lock yourself in well he did have that palace get is able to get out and for the time being though single villager is actually going to be the one who's attempting to build up the great wall of the english between uh i would say england and scotland i guess but it is going to be scouted out i think which means that that single Zipai is going to be ruining a lot of plans here for the real team. Did it actually get scouted out or is the Zipai just really I... scouting Zipai? It definitely didn't get, it didn't get scouted out for the time being, but it will be scouted out very shortly. Do you see here though that that tower has been known, or it is known that it has gone up. And we do see that Zipai was on its way, but it's going to be turned around and surrounded. It could have been so close to know that that trade was going on. Definitely the wall the here, though. Do see, yeah, that one section of wall, unfortunately, left right there, and the army. It's not going to be noticed. Army. It's actually oh, just it's... not going to be noticed. I... Well, it's fine, I guess. Only Gams has more important things on his mind. He, you know, the idea is to put in pressure faster. That could definitely be one of his thoughts. Of course, he's fighting solo with his teammate, probably on the other side to draw pressure, but no way that Longbowman ranged units not really going to be able to knock down the wall um, as he yeah. slashes playing Goose Goose Duck. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's not coming through the stream, luckily. But yeah. <laughs> right now, this fight is currently 2-1. We do see the mass of Plekko. It's just on the wrong side. It's completely at the wrong side at the wrong time. And this is a straight up 2v1, and I'm not too sure if actually Alnick Camps can take this. He can't even fall back. He can. He can. The wall hasn't been completed for the time being. So he still has some breathing room here. But still, though, this fight's still going on, still happening, still doing pretty well, actually, for Alnick Camps. Scouts are not doing too much. We do see, though, the wall. It has been stopped for the time being. It's a very tight choke point here. It's going to be cancelled as well, though. So he is able to get through. No blacksmith for Pleco right now either, so he doesn't have that um, siege engineering, so he can't build those ramps, so he can't do anything with this. So the only thing you realistically can do is take a straight up fight. And a straight up fight you don't really want to do now, Pleco as well, going up to the next stage, probably with that King's Palace, absolutely. So he is effectively on three town centers now. Yeah, it is really unfortunate that Pleco's, um, if you consider army as resources, they're and you know you're floating res when you don't spend it you're also floating res when you have army uh, isn't doing something it's just a little bit unlucky that pleco lost his scout to the warrior scout so wasn't able to scout out the wall on that side and didn't realize that the counter attack wouldn't be that effective they do of course now observe that trade is going on but that is not a warrior scout that's just normally a scout I mean, it's just a normal scout, and that is information that can be very useful, knowing that that sacred site, or knowing that the uh, the trade is going, and now actually only can as well. It's going to have to castellate which that with that MIA, the Verimba coming shortly as well. And that Verimba is going to be so much value, all that trade being turned into army that can be used once again to defend the trade. The Mali have a lot of really good positive feedback loops that once harnessed make them I'm not going to say unfun to play against, but I'm going to think it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much, right? We do see 190 gold here, actually. It, it varies, 187, a little, little bit of differential. 
depends on I guess which where you're going with the market. Uh, regardless, though, that wall not really bringing a whole lot of value to stopping them for the time being. And surprisingly, not a single relic has been picked up so far. I think. Well, they've only just reached castle, but uh, the two imams were out for only camps, so I imagined that they would be thinking about grabbing those relics. Oh, there, there you go. They, they are being um, used up for their purpose, and they're they're really useful. The only problem, of course, is that both with Ottoman being such a wood intensive sieve, sometimes you don't have the mosque, so you just have to bring the relic back, pop it down. And then go out, you know. Like, yeah, the amount of times I've done yeah. that is a little bit too high, honestly. <laughs> but we do see tower being put up here. So we're all for Pleco looking to put a lot of pressure here. <laughs> Walling and saying that if you if I can get through, you can't get through. That's fair. Sometimes I forget that the enemy's walls are the enemy's walls. And I think that they're my walls instead. Uh, but Royal Black are not making that mistake. Vortex Reload we're going to repair the wall in this side, and the push is going to come through the center for the Devils. And uh, this time, it might be Real who's um, able to, well, face the 1v2 because the armies are a little bit split. They are very split, though. A decent army size from pretty much everyone right now, so it could be a huge clash. Be a huge struggle right now, and still, though, for the time being, right, trade has gone in uninterrupted. Has started, or it is going slower than uh, per usual, simply because, well, it, there's no trade trick going on, right? Absolutely, Vanguard, uh, you know, clad, well clad men at arms are out here, but the Marimba is bumping with the Fadi Warriors, which is, of course, absolutely the right choice. And here come the clash of the arms. Oh, here we go. It's going to be entering in the middle here. Absolute is clashed upon. It's just going to be having a straight up battle here. Who do you focus? And the answer is both of them at the same time. While the t uh, the army from the seven town center gang is just clumped up in the middle right now. I have to see right now. It's actually a battle that seems to be going into Reel's favor. Warrior scouts and sofa is doing a great amount of deal. The Janissaries. Probably not the correct choice right now as well. They do a lot of damage, yes, but they're so easily cleaned up by those longbows. You see here more and more relics are being picked up all behind all of this in the tower. And back up is going to have to be cancelled. Quick check-in though, see what he actually went with. Same as he always did, so that means he actually did make those uh, Janissaries manually. Very expensive units. And uh, to me, a little bit of an odd choice. But the army numbers for the Ottoman player has been absolutely cleaned up right now and looking to go further and further back. That Imam is gonna try his best. Um, gets. A oh, I jinxed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> but here, the man at arms, look at how much they're tanking, though. They're taking so many shots. With that clad armor, absolutely. The problem here is that uh, the Ottoman numbers got cleaned up, but obviously the Malian trade continues to tick, and it's like this timer. How long can you let it tick before the army numbers become overwhelming? Because at this level, of course, players are so good at turning resources into army, so good at using that army to accomplish objectives out there that the devils need to come forward once again, need to try and push through the center. But instead, Manganel, going Manganel. To it's going to be targeting the villagers, not getting a single kill out of that one. Still, though, cancels and just denies the tower going up, provides a lot of vision, provides a lot of attack speed. And we do see, though, the walls here for only camps absolutely to protect himself. Does really care about this forwards position that much. A quick observation, only Camps has started trading himself as a sort Ooh. of idea behind equalizing, and he is using the trade trick. He is absolutely using the trade trick. Quick check in, well, though. Not not for that trader, but for the other traders. The, the other traders. I mean, <laughs> to a certain extent, you just want to... At one point, you just, like, ah, select all markets, start trading. Uh, regardless, though, three towers has been attempted to be put here, and the third one is, uh, is finally... Going to be going up. This uh, this one as well, though, from Vortex, not going to be able to get up. 
I do see though the tower right now uncontested for the time being. Might not be long though for this world. It's going to be actually having a siege workshop that is wanted to go up on the front side here. And interestingly enough though, right, there is no a tower. There is no white tower. We do see though both English players decided to go with the King's Palace. But now the clash in the middle. And it is going to be Placo, the English player who has the advantage right now. As he does have the uh, networks of Citadels. He does have that... Man at arms on his front side, though Mangonel not into play just yet. Certainly looking to be very soon. All things that Mangonel hit them was a fadi on that front line as they were dancing around. Uh, humongous numbers of long women for Vortex. Of course, the men at arms will, with the ironclad buff do tank a lot. There are crossbowmen mixed in, just a few, um, I guess. Not. The scary part for me is just how big the difference in numbers between the English players are, while the Ottoman numbers versus the Malian numbers are pretty much approximately the same. Let me do see if I click the man at arms. See, I think it literally just clicked them here and then just like, yeah, you you guys be busy with this. Oh, Mangonel, 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 Mangonel. <gasps> Spread formation just in time. It has to protect this long uh, Mangonel, though. But the longbows, they're actually doing a great uh, amount of damage, though. Mangonel shot once again going to be hitting. The Mangonel is protected. It's not going to be happening anything with this. Uh, There's a second Mangonel as well on the backside here. But now it's under fire from the Longbows. Actually able to take down the Mangonel. Yeah, and beyond a certain point, like it's just okay for to hit spread formation and fire at the Mangonel and you'll just kill it yeah. fast enough. Like, I mean, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I mean, you do have a lot of ranged armor, right? But they only have 140. and So effectively that does mean... 140 shots from longbows yeah, and like longbows you, if, with if 10 you have like yeah you have four you have 40 longbows here and they shoot quite fast so it's only like three four rounds you you only take like one or two shots to the face like, like look at this knight yeah. actually just simply just disappears the crossbows very much more expensive unit you just like bring to mind the fact that the archer numbers for the english and uh, the other english player just aren't in the same league as what we're witnessing here. Ideally, you want to set up camp, by the way, uh, behind this while things are happening to try and heal up the longbows, make sure that um, weak. There you go. You just fire at the mangonel, and the mangonel has to run away. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it moves a party as well, though, coming into effect. It's not going to be able to actually get on top of it, but the longbows, they don't care. They just take out and say, you have given us enough pain already. Just get out. Do you see, though, the man at arms, right? Look at how much damage. They're taking, they're soaking, absolutely soaking. And still on the front side here in the middle where it's so contested, there has not been a single keep this game. And I can't help to wonder why is that? And the answer to that, you can't afford to. You have to put your resources into other things to see how tight it is. I mean, Vortex actually though is quite happy with, uh, with farming. Um, but regardless, it's so tough. There's no room to put down. And Vortex actually, though... Uh, did he go with another tower? I think he dropped a stone wall uh, foundation on the south. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, yeah, you're right. Because it's only 500 stones, so it's not enough for a keep, too much for a TC. So I figured it had to be walls. Uh, yeah, it makes know. a lot of sense. You do want to fortify your position. On the other hand, um, only counts is also mining stone, I think. So I imagine that he'll be able to eventually... Um, oh, he's got a little bit of stone, but he's yeah. not actively mining it. Imperial Age, we do see that Seagate Castle. It's going to be boosting up those uh, traders instead of trying to take control of the middle. And here we go again. Springles Ooh. onto the front side here, looking to take down. It's, it's a decent amount of Springles right now. It's definitely going to be uh, uh, pressuring. Uh, unless they go straight into the front side and just tank up like they are some ramps. That's not the correct thing to do right now. Still going to be looking to take do some damage here. Those Mangonels, they have free reign now. Mangonel from uh, Vortex as well. Gonna get some decent shots here. Now they're just fighting. They're just moving around. They're dancing. They don't really want to commit right now with those Mangonels. But still, they're able to. Springle has been able to take out one or two Mangonels here. In fact, oh, Mangonel! On to Placo. Huge here. Placo as well has that ding ding hand up. Go up to the Imperial Age. Potentially might look to drop a Berkshire Palace in the middle, but it might not even be needed. They're just winning the fight. They're just running down the real team right now. 
yeah, the real team, the just the sofa numbers there were not quite enough to be able to snipe that siege. And Vortex had to give way. But once the siege goes, Vortex has superior numbers and will be able to comfortably recover. Should be able to comfortably recover. That's at the siege. Doesn't look like it is going anywhere. So many low health long rolls. You have to imagine that the fear of the Mangala, it builds up. Was more. that villager in on the fight the entire time? <laughs> Well, you know, know, like, it's a it's a kind of a vacation. You have to build a lot yeah. of things. You have okay, to do a lot but here of we go. You want to see where your taxes go. Yeah, uh, here we go, though. Trade now under pressure. It's going to be shutting down a lot of those resources. Perk Chapala is not even needed right now. It's not even being thought about. It doesn't care. He just wants to take this fight. The Manganel Siege Cruise has come through, though. So this Manganel could be doing a whole lot of damage. And that's the forward... That's the forward Berkshire Palace we were talking about. Doesn't care about the middle when you can take control of the base and Mangonel shot. We can absolutely see. It's getting two shots. Absolutely doing the big damage here now. And now the production of Vortex is being camped. To Alucard, he can't really produce enough units right now. He doesn't have the production, doesn't have the resources to be able to keep it up. We do see here though 4,000 food a minute for, uh, for Blacko. Absolutely pumping through and more and more villagers coming through. Hundred a thousand gold received from Oli Camps. Pleco has. So he's just looking to produce more and more army right now. More and more men at arms. A chat at arms. Should rather be calling him and now. Vortex going up with his own keep onto the backside. But it might potentially be too a little too late with that one. Yeah, it's, uh, of course, the keep will help protect the traders with the Seagate Castle buff. Another Mangonel just goes down there. Uh, it's a little, like, we can talk a little bit about the Springles that were lost early on. Because I definitely feel like the Mangonel shots, but well, they changed the game here. Yeah, and that Mangonel still alive, Ooh. still looking for something. And real decide that this is the end of the game. That Berkshire firing away at the Mangonel that is five screens away. It's just like, yeah, why? Why is that allowed? I, 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 I just don't 